So this can be done, of course, using modern numerical methods, but there are some analytical methods that exist, and these can be are very instructive to understand what's going on. So what we're going to look at is something called Prantl's Classic Lifting Line Theory. The details of how this are developed are in the notes. Here we'll just go at high level. So this is still a very useful um, model, though it's typically used for preliminary calculations. It can be used for arbitrary lift distributions, but here we're going to develop it and then apply it to a special but very useful case, the elliptical wing distribution or lift distribution. So if we think about vortices, there are two kinds. A vortex can be bound, which means it's stuck to a certain location in the flow. For example, a vortex that's attached to a wing, or it can be free, which moves means that it moves along with the same fluid elements. And if we have a bound vortex, with strength gamma, this experiences a force L prime plus rho infinity, V infinity gamma from the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem. So the big leap we make here is that we're going to replace the finite wing of span B with a bound vortex from Y equals negative E over 2 to B over 2. To illustrate that graphically, we're going to go from this Nice and induced drag. So y equals b over 2 to this. With a bound part of the vortex here and free parts of the vortex here with the same extension to negative b over 2 and b over 2 for the same incoming velocity, b infinity. So this is going from a finite wing to a model of it using something we call a horseshoe vortex. Now, because of the second Helmholtz theorem, the vortex filament can't end in the fluid, so these free legs are required, which extend to infinity. Now, having this simple of a model of the wing doesn't quite work, um, and it can be shown, and this is done in the notes, that if you just model a wing this way, that as you go to the end of the wing at b over 2 or negative b over 2, the downwash goes to infinity. Clearly this isn't right, so we need a more sophisticated model. This is basically done by representing the wing by the superposition, um, because we're using potential flow modeling, we can superimpose solutions. Basically we want to superimpose a large number of these horseshoe vortices, each with a different bound vortex strength. And so we end up with something like this. Let's go to infinity. And here. We have some strength, here's another strength, here's another strength. So we'll call this D gamma 1, D gamma 2, D gamma 3. Each of those values, this is y equals B over 2, this is y is negative B over 2. And just to illustrate, this is the direction. This is gamma 1, D 
we got two, we got three, and then these start going the other way, we got a three, we got a two, and we got a one. So all these collinear bound vortices are attached along what we call the lifting line, which is where the name of this model comes from. And as you can see, the circulation varies along this. Note that the strength of the trailing vortices is equal to the change in circulation along the lifting line. Now, if we take this to the limit of an infinite number of these horseshoe vortices, each one with an infinitesimal strength, d gamma, we get this. A distribution gamma of y with a value at the center of gamma naught again going from b over 2 to b over 2 with our legs going downstream this is basically now a continuous vortex sheet downstream now if you integrate this strength of this vortex sheet all along the span, it's zero because this half is going in one direction and the other half is going in the other direction. Now we can calculate the contribution from each part of this vortex to the downwash and I'll, that's done in detail in the notes. But here I'm going to skip to the result and we'll use the result of thin airflow theory that the lift slope is 2 pi So, that what we get is that the angle of attack as a function of y naught is gamma of y naught over pi b infinity chord c, which is also a function of y naught plus alpha L equals zero of y naught plus one over four pi v infinity times the integral from negative b over two to b over two of gamma dy y naught minus y dy. So this is the fundamental equation of Prandtl's lifting line theory, and it's a little complicated because it's an integral differential equation. The unknown is gamma of y naught, which appears both outside and inside the integral, although its derivative is what appears in the integral. So we can solve this equation, and it gives us the lift distribution, L prime of y naught, and also can then give us the lift coefficient and the induced drag. So the results of this are, of course, L prime is rho infinity, v infinity, gamma of y naught, and the lift is rho infinity, v infinity, the integral from negative b over 2 to b over 2, gamma of y naught dy, and the lift coefficient cl is 2 over v infinity times the area s times the integral from negative b over 2 to b over 2 of gamma of y naught dy. Finally, the induced drag, di, is rho infinity, v infinity, and then from negative b over 2 to b over 2, gamma of y naught, alpha i, y naught, dy naught. So, we're still missing this distribution of circulation, which is the key to getting values for all these things. 
Now, a general solution to this does exist, uh, but here we're just going to consider a special case in the last part of this lecture.